All right. Mmm. Oh my gosh, so good. So I've made jambalaya many, many times for a couple people, for a huge group, because this is really, really easy to scale up, but I've never done the fire roasted situation. Complete game changer if you have a fire. So do it, it's so good. Hey, yo, Chef Corso, I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks. And me and my new buddy, AJ over here, yeah, we are going camping and we are going on a one night backpacking tour. And we are here in Han State Park and we are packing up our last few things for our one night backpacking trip. And AJ, where are we, what trail are we doing again? We're doing the pickle trail. The pickle trail? The pickle trail. Why didn't you tell me? We could have done a pickle party meal plan. But, you know, maybe next time. Yeah. Maybe next time. Well, we have got a, a couple great recipes on, on tap for our trip here for our one night meal plan. The thing about a one night meal plan is you kind of can do just about everything. Maybe not 100% raw things, but you're only going to be gone for a little bit. But we were looking at one dinner and one breakfast plus some snacks. So let's see what's on the meal plan. AJ here is host of Outdoors Podcast, which is a great podcast telling some awesome stories for fly fishing, camping, backpacking, and general outdoors. So what we're doing is we're doing a video for me, cooking up a great one night meal plan, and we're gonna do a podcast sitting by a river for him. So it's a great win-win for both of us, and we both get to get outside. We've both been super busy over the last few weeks. I'm just traveling through town, so it's just really, really nice to be able to get outside for a little bit. You don't have to have a huge three, four, seven night backpacking trip where you're covering miles. We just need to get outside and enjoy, turn off our phones uh, and, and enjoy what we're doing. So we're here at AJ's rig and you know, again, both of us are, are pretty busy. So we didn't have a chance to pack up things uh, at the house, but the great part about uh, uh, quick, fast recipes and cooking with real ingredients outdoors is you can just pack it up at your rig Put it, in a, put it in a bag, put it in your pack, and get out there. So what we're eating tonight and tomorrow is jambalaya, which is a great backpacker meal, but we are elevating it tonight because we actually have a campfire. And I haven't had a campfire in many, many months because I've been traveling out west and there have been a whole lot of fire bands. So what we're gonna do is do a fire roasted jambalaya. So we are gonna roast our andouille sausage, fire roast our bell peppers, got a quick little instant rice, and some hot sauce packets, some Creole seasoning, and we're gonna have a great dinner in just a few minutes. And then for breakfast, we've got one of the fastest, quickest meals that isn't oatmeal, but we've got blueberry banana granola. And what I love to do is pack two fruits. So we've got blueberry and bananas. You can also use dried blueberries and dried banana and a couple Nature Valley granola bars because these are dry as hell anyway, and they are granola. They are just a smash or two of bar. So we're just gonna take, pack that along really easy, one for each of us, and we're gonna cook that up. Man, we get to the campsite and this is what's here. 
who's eating package meals camp it come on come on make some monte boca outdoor eats beef stroganoff and pack and pack it out Jeez. so we got to our campsite here and listen folks pack that out nobody wants this crappy hash brown egg situation pack it out we are here at camp and we just finished recording the podcast so if you guys are interested in check it out check it out the link below but it's time for dinner and we are going to make fire roasted jambalaya and you uh, said something during the podcast that was really interesting about jambalaya i have literally only made jambalaya out of a box oh yeah i've never made it from scratch like this nice so i'm pumped well this is going to be really really great so the the normal uh, outdoor eats uh recipe comes together in about 10 or 15 minutes we're gonna take a little bit more time and add some more flavor for fire roasting our veggies and our sausage. But the interesting thing about the Zatarain's box, like it takes 25 to 30 minutes to make. It kind of takes a long time and it's it scorches on the bottom too quite a bit. So this one will cook up uh, even faster once we get all of our ingredients all roasted up. So let's take a look at our ingredients in our pack-along bag. So first thing we need to do is roast up our andouille sausage. You can use just hot dogs too, or fake meat, whatever you like. And we're gonna roast up our red peppers and green peppers as well. And my grandpa has a great saying about hot dogs and weenies, is nobody wants a slick hot dog. And at first I was like, that's kind of gross. But then also, you are right, grandpa. Nobody wants a slick hot dog. So take that home with you. Is it hot? Very. It's weird. It's over the fire. Oh, I like what you're doing there. A little Christmas action. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. Nice. So we've got our andouille sausage and our bell peppers all fire roasted, which is going to give us some really great additional flavor. So now we just need to chop up our ingredients and get them going in the pot. Oh man, the smell of these roasted peppers is just awesome. Oh, it's so nice. We've got all of our ingredients nice and chopped up here. So now we need to get them going in our pot.
clearly this batch is going to be super meaty. But you could easily just use one link and go for heavy rice. But, you know, we're hungry. We hiked the whole three miles today. Add a little bit of Creole seasoning. This one does have quite a bit of salt in it. So you could easily add a little bit of salt as well. Lastly, we're going to add our water and our instant rice. Nice full pot. Oh man, this is getting exciting. Nice, and once this comes up to a boil, all we're going to do is shut off our burner put the lid on it and come back in about 10 minutes. Nice. Well, thanks for your help prepping uh, our, our fire roasted jambalaya. And so while we're letting that, that chill, we can snack on these extra, extra sausage bites because we can't let those go to waste. Fire really made them nice. Mm. So good. But what can people expect when they uh, check out your podcast? As I ask you with sausage in your Right. Mouth. I've always loved stories, uh, and I figured out that I can only generate so many of them on my own. So the podcast was just my attempt to go out and find people with really cool stories and share them because I can't live all their experiences by myself. Uh, and then it just kind of evolved, started a website and a YouTube channel, and it's just basically me trying to share stories from all kinds of different people and then my own experiences along the way. Uh, some RV stuff, some backpacking stuff, a little bit of fly fishing, just kind of how do you have more fun outside and cool jobs and all kinds of stuff like that. So. Nice. I like it. Well, like I kind of feel the same way where I could be doing this by myself, but it's so much fun having somebody else along for prep and help, but also just to share the experience. It's nice to have, you know, a few minutes or a few hours outside by yourself for a couple days, but it's more fun to share it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the biggest reason that I, you know, wanted to come and do this with you is, is really to just kind of build a relationship and be, be friends and, you know, enjoy being out here together. Yeah, love it. What have been uh, a couple interesting things you've learned from some of your new uh, friends? You know, um, I've just really learned that culture makes a big difference in kind of where you come from and so really try to listen to people with an open ear about their experiences uh, if you come from northern michigan or if you come from louisiana you may have a different uh you know understanding of different ways of got going about things as somebody that lives maybe in california and they're all in some ways probably valid and so it's good to just try and learn and listen from other people rather than try and tell them to do it your way that's kind of the biggest thing <laughs> i've learned Nice. I like it. Yeah, I think it's through the outdoor lens is, you know, we think of different cultures and, and things as far as different countries, but our country is incredibly diverse and it's incredibly diverse with its outdoor experiences. And from this mid-south area to Texas to the northwest to California, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, and it's all just a different way to kind of have the same good time. Yeah, absolutely. I do really appreciate, though, that, you know, you get to bring some of those cultural experiences in through the food. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get to come out and cook all kinds of different dishes and maybe somebody tries something out in the woods that maybe they wouldn't at home because, mm -hmm. you know, they've got so many other options or something like that. So hopefully it can kind of open them up to trying some new stuff. I mean, that's what I'm all about. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, cool. Well, um, check out his podcast and where can they find you? Uh, it's pretty simple, outdoorspodcast.com. It's pretty much that on most of the other channels. I'm Podcast Outdoors on Twitter, but basically everywhere else is just Outdoors Podcast. Nice. Uh, well, great. Well, I think it is time to check our jambalaya, and let's have some dinner. For sure. Nice. I, I did this great cooking video in the Red River Gorge, and it was like making this pretty elaborate meal, and I literally framed my entire head right out of the video, and without that part... The rest of the story just like doesn't make sense. So I no, pretty much lost the whole video. Because you have no head. And like you guys don't want to watch us with no head. And so I have a story about that too. Where like one time my dad was helping me. Some of you guys know my dad. Uh, he's a great, great special, special feature on the old <laughs> channel. Um, but he was helping me and he was doing his best to help. But I go to edit it and he, it was literally like right here. And it was like going back and forth like this. And I'm like. 
dad, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I got it. I can't use it. I have to do it again. And he felt really, really bad. And But, you know, it, it happens. But, kind of him to try. <laughs> kind of him to try. But also, like, we don't really want to put out a video with only half a head. Yeah. yeah. No, no bueno. No bueno. <laughs> no bueno. Okay. It's time to eat our rice and check it out. And so it's been sitting right here. Uh, been chilling by the fire. And let me get a nice tight shot here. Ooh, look at that nice big pot. See that over there? Okay, nice. I would love some green onions on here, but you know, you can't have all the things. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so good. So I've made jambalaya many, many times for a couple people, for a huge group, because this is really, really easy to scale up, but I've never done the fire roasted situation. Complete game changer if you have a fire. So do it, it's so good. Nailed the spice. Mm. You can always add more spice, you can always add more salt. So if you're ever concerned about If you're ever concerned about a seasoning or something new, and actually the first time I tried the seasoning, it freaking blew my mouth off because it was really, really spicy. So I definitely know how to dial that in, but. Oh man, I gotta eat this sausage. Dude, this is so good. <laughs> but really, really good and a really great way to elevate a dish with a campfire and a camp stove. You know, you could easily put a pot over the fire too as well, but up to you, but this is a really great, kind of great hybrid approach. But thank you again for your help. So this is our one dinner for our trip today. And we've got a great breakfast coming up tomorrow. But we're going to go. But we're going to go ahead and eat this. Good morning. Well, we decided to move uh, locations here and uh, eat breakfast by this really nice river. Uh, just a really short walk from the old campsite. But let's check in on our blueberries, because we did pack fresh blueberries and we'll see if they, they lasted through that huge hike we did <laughs> yesterday. So overall, looking pretty darn good. We've got a couple that have you know popped a little bit, but yeah, they're, they're looking pretty great. But blueberries can last for multiple days on the trail. Again, you can do some uh, dried blueberries too, um, if you're concerned for those longer trips. So what we're gonna do, if you wanna help me out here, yeah. I'm gonna throw those blueberries in our pot. I'm going to throw all of them in there. All of them? Yep. Go throw a little dash of cinnamon in there. How big is the dash? Try. <laughs> oh, it's too much. Perfect. And that's the thing, remember last night with our dinner, is you can always add more. Yeah. Right? And then we've got our bananas in my pocket. And, you know, I didn't bring a cutting board here, at least down to the river. Uh, so what I like to do is do a little bit of a, 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 a hack situation. Just take one strip out of it like that. And just slice it right in the peel. And then we can just throw that right in our pot. That's brilliant. And while AJ is finishing chopping, is we've got our Nature Valley granola bars, and we're just gonna crush them up. Most likely, they're gonna be all crushed up anyway. So we've got our blueberries and our cinnamon right in here. We'll throw a teeny bit of water just to help loosen it up, to make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom. And then we're gonna turn on our burner and cook it up. And the other great part about this breakfast is it's literally gonna take about five minutes. That's nice. Pretty, pretty nice. So if you ever have those days on the trail where you do need to get, get rolling, you can still have a nice warm breakfast and not a lot of time. Awesome. Mm. 
and all that cinnamon. Yeah. I would never think to put cinnamon in blueberries. Yeah. Right, so that's looking good. So go ahead and put the lid on there. What I'm looking for is these blueberries should kind of break down a little bit to make a little bit of a jam, a little bit of a compote. So I'm just going to turn it down to a nice simmer and you know, just after even like 30 seconds or a minute, this is what we're looking like. And wow, look at all that moisture that came out of our blueberries. So I'd like a little bit of that moisture to go away and kind of cook down a little bit. And then we'll throw in our bananas. So our blueberries have burst. We do have quite a bit of moisture in there and that's gonna be completely okay. But I think the next thing we're gonna do we're going to add our bananas. So if you want to hold the pot, yeah. Go ahead and add our bananas here by the river. And I like to cook these for just a few seconds, just to kind of break down the bananas a little bit. Ooh, hey, bonus banana. Keep on it. Sanding. All right. All right, if you want to stir, I'll light our burner again. So we cut off our heat, we've cooked our bananas just a, a few seconds, and now we're going to go ahead and add our granola. Just give that a light stir. Wow. Well, that didn't take very long. No. <laughs> so just a few minutes, and then this is what we're looking like. Man. Spoon. Oh my god. So what are you tasting? It's like a berry crumble. Like a like a grandma's berry crumble. That's unbelievable. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing about uh, the granola topping here. It's like it's almost like a crisp too. So you can even make this for dessert, mm. breakfast or dessert, whatever whatever way you want to go. But that is a really nice, warm, homey way to start your morning. Mm. You nailed that one. Mm. I'm just gonna take a minute. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, this is crazy good. <laughs> well, and the one thing that I think is great about these one night trips is again, we've both been pretty busy and just haven't been able to plan, you know, two, three, four, four night trip. But sometimes you just need to sleep outside, be outside for a few hours, you know, turn the phone off. But it's just been, you know, really, really nice just to check out for a little bit. And, you know, you don't need this, this huge, epic adventure to enjoy being outside and cooking outside. Yeah, it was really great that we could get all the grocery ingredients just at a local grocery store. I didn't have to get any special, you know, outdoor outfit or anything. It was all just available right there because we're using you know, real food. Real food, yeah. And that's the thing with my style of recipes is that I want you to get outside and do this rather than spend all day in your kitchen dehydrating and prepping. Like, get out and enjoy and then also eat something tasty. I like your approach. Thanks. Well, we're going to finish up our breakfast here by the river and then hit the trail and head back home. Awesome trip. Man, that was yummy. That was way different than I thought it was going to be. I actually thought we were just going to break up the granola bars and just have like dry granola with some berries and slices of bananas. So that was way more than I was expecting. Oh, well, yeah, and it's funny because we just heated it up for about less than five minutes and it really changes it. Unbelievable. Nice. I'm glad you liked it.